Hello fellow gamers, I'm Christopher Christman of Retro Game Network, and coming up next, a look at last week's retro video game news on the RGN Files for the week ending Saturday, September 28, 2019. In the RGN files this week, throwback console manufacturer At Games has been recently hit with two separate lawsuits between Bandai Namco as well as drugstore chain Walgreens. Bandai filed their lawsuit at the United States District Court for the Northern District of California on September 20th for alleged copyright infringement over their usage of the Ms. Pac-Man franchise. In addition, the lawsuit filed from Bandai also alleges counterfeiting, unfair competition, and false advertising. Details of the lawsuit go as far back as 2012, when the CEO of Act Games had approached Bandai with an offer to sell plug-and-play throwback devices featuring the character of Ms. Pac-Man. At the time, Bandai had, quote, expressly rejected his proposal, end quote. Since then, Act Games has sent many licensing proposals to Bandai, in which some of them were in fact accepted. In the lawsuit, Bandai makes it known that while it did have an active working relationship with Act Games, it never granted them permission specifically to use the Ms. Pac-Man likeness in any way. The court was asked to award an injunction against Act Games and to put the case before a jury. Bandai is seeking damages for an unspecified amount, however they believe they are due triple damages under California law for, quote, willful, knowing, and intentional infringement, end quote, relating to the Ms. Pac-Man product. In addition, drugstore chain Walgreens has also filed a complaint against the throwback console developer, with their lawsuit accusing at games of breach of contract. This suit was also filed last month, in which they say that their deal with the company allowed their products to be provided and made available for sale at stores on a guaranteed sale basis. Supposedly in their contract, At Games had agreed to accept any unsold stock as a return and then refund the chain whatever it paid for them in addition to an additional fee and shipping costs. It would guarantee Walgreens a profit or their money back. The drugstore giant stated in their suit that they returned over 66,500 units to At Games in which they paid between $15 and $38 per unit. Upon the devices being returned, At Games refused to make their payment as previously guaranteed. Walgreens is claiming a loss of approximately $1.62 million due to this refusal. Walgreens had stated, quote, Allowing Act Games to retain the benefits of its own wrongdoing, as alleged herein, would violate fundamental principles of justice, equality, and good conscience, including by offering Act Games the opportunity to sell the returned items twice, end quote. At Games has obtained an extension to answer their claims to their lawsuits by no later than October 10th of this year. While video games are certainly our pastime, other non-video game hobbies such as model building are very popular among people from all walks of life. Bandai announced at last week's All Japan Model Hobby Show in Tokyo a brand new line of plastic model kits which take on the look of the classic and original Sony PlayStation as well as the Sega Saturn. These kits are going to be the launch of a brand new lineup of models called the Best Hits Chronicle which feature the company's partnership with several manufacturers of many successful products that launched during the Heisei era. The PlayStation and Saturn model kits will both feature a 2 to 5 ratio scale, meaning that they will be slightly less than half of the original console sizes. Aside from being able to build the exterior shell, you will also get to build the inner workings as well, as both models will also include simulated internal works as well. In addition, you will also get a mini controller to build, which matches the appropriate system. While these products are just for show when it comes to the final product, some retro gamers are already curious about the possibility of using these models with a product like the Raspberry Pi as a way of creating homebrew versions of throwback mini console devices. Both kits are slated to be released in March of 2020 and will cost approximately 2,750 yen or just a little more than 25 American dollars. We're very quickly approaching the release date of the highly anticipated Shenmue 3, and one thing that may have been forgotten was the promise that Kickstarter supporters were to receive a playable demo before the game's release. During the original crowdfunding, EaseNet had promised those that pledged over $100 a demonstration of the game before anyone else. This said trial version was finally made available to backers over the course of the past weekend. This special edition allows you to experience a single day in Beilu Village, offers up storyline elements, battling, minigames, and more. The game ends when you progress the story and defeat the key character in battle, or when the in-game time reaches 9pm. Differences between this demonstration and the full title include no saving or loading options, some different specifications, as well as no tutorial or story at the beginning of the game. If you requested a refund due to the recent changes in distribution, you may still claim a trial version code, which will in no way affect refund eligibility. Shenmue 3 is currently slated to be released for the PlayStation 4 and PC in both physical and digital versions on November 19th of this year. 
In addition, Limited Run Games had released an exclusive collector's edition just a few weeks ago, which will be shipped out on that same release date. A new flash card has been recently announced by Retro HQ that will offer Atari 7800 gamers a brand new method of loading ROM images onto actual hardware, as announced in a tweet last week. The untitled project will include a small embedded boot ROM and 512K of SRAM. Saint from Retro HQ was asked on social media if there was any potential to increase the SRAM to a full megabyte, and he agreed that it would be a very good idea. 512K of serial flash memory for menus and firmware will also be included, and the device will use the micro SD format for ROM image storage. The cartridges are planned to offer Pokey support, but will not include modern BUP chip support. The devices will also include serial headers for development purposes. In addition, it will also be compatible with the Atari 7800 high score cartridge by means of writing to the SD card for saving the high scores. When asked about backwards support for the original Atari 2600, he said, quote, 2600 support should be fine. It will require the 2600 mappers, but other than that, all good. Support for 7800 games is the initial goal, but if I implement all the 2600 mappers, then it will support 2600 to the ability of the 7800. It's not perfect, end quote. There is no word on an official price or release date, however Saint has stated that it would not be ready until sometime next year. And finally, this week, a new homebrew title is currently in the works that would bring a Final Fantasy-style Japanese role-playing game to the Intellivision platform. The new game, which is currently untitled, is the creation of Matthew Kale, aka Skywaffle, on the Atari Age forums. According to him, he has recently been tinkering with any basic a cross-compiler that takes the basic programming language source code and then translates it into the CP1610 assembler. According to Kale, the program is something being developed in his spare time, and over time it has begun to resemble an actual game as opposed to just the original engine that it was intended to be. He stated, quote, I don't know if I will make a real game out of this, but figured I would share some progress in an early demo that has some similar mechanics, along with the source if anybody would want to look at it." End quote. He intends to keep tinkering with the project, and is aware of the challenges that come with developing such a game on a platform like the Intellivision, which are mostly related to the amount of ROM space that is available and required for a game like this to be completed. Because this project is being done as a side project, there is no official word on a potential release date. A work-in-progress ROM playable on Intellivision emulators can be found on the Atari Age forums, and fans of the platform are encouraged to provide feedback. That's it for this week's edition of the RGN Files. For those listening on BGM on FM on 107.9 WRML LP Mace Landing, please stay tuned, there'll be more music coming up shortly. For complete details of any of this week's stories, visit RetroGameNetwork.com. And don't forget to check us out on our social media outlets on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Retro Game Network, and on Twitter and Twitch at Retro Game Net. For the RGN Files, I'm Christopher Christman. This week's news story is provided by the following The Atari H Forums, Games Industry, Mega Visions, Polygon, Retro RGB, Sega Bits, Twinfinity.